Pivot tables are one of the most powerful tools in Excel, but what if we could make them better? One of the drawbacks with them is that traditionally you can only create them from one source of data, but today we're going to take a look at how we can produce them from multiple sources within the same workbook and from external files. We're going to create it in two different ways. First, using the Power Pivot method, and then the second method, using Power Query. Let's dive in. The first method we're going to take a look at is the Power Pivot method. You should see the Power Pivot tab across your ribbon up here, but if you don't, like in this instance, you need to come across the file, then down to Options, and then go to Add-ins. You'll see in the inactive applications, there's Power Pivot down here, and you'll see that it's a COM add-in. Come down to this drop down and select COM add-ins and select go. That'll open up a new prompt whereby you put a tick in the checkbox and click OK. And now we have the Power Pivot option available to us. First thing we need to do is to get all of our data tables into the Power Pivot model. We've got three data tables. We've got sales, which consists of customer number, product code, date and number of units. We've got products, which has got product code, cupcake flavor, revenue per unit and cost per unit. And then we've got another workbook that's got the customer's details on it. So it's got customer number, customer name, email address and phone number. So if we go across back to our main um, workbook here, we're going to add all of these in to our data model. If you just click in the table, and come up to the power pivot at the top and click add to data model. That'll take a couple of seconds, but then it opens up this new window and it adds it into what looks like another sort of spreadsheet. And you can see that that's got the product tab down at the bottom. We go back to Excel and then to the sales table. We're gonna add this one to the data model as well. So now we've got the products and the sales tables both added. The next thing we need to do is add the customer table, but this was in a different workbook. So what we need to do is come up to here and go from other sources. Now I'll open up this new window, scroll all the way to the bottom. You'll see that they've got Excel files. Click next. And then we need to select the path that it's coming from. Let's click browse. And I'm gonna to browse to where I've got the customer table open, use the first row as column headers, click next, and then finish. So that should now have brought in our customer table. It all looks good. Uh, customer number, customer name, they're all across the top. And then I know that we've got 10 customers. Now we have our three tables loaded in. We need to create relationships in order to be able to make a pivot table. Quickest and easiest way to do this is to come up to diagram view. In here, we can see our three tables and we need to pick and drag the related columns between each of them. So I've picked customer number from the sales table and I'm gonna link that with the customer number in the customers table. And I'm gonna do the same with product code. So I'm gonna click and just drag that up the product codes in the products table. The way to think of this is that within the products and the customers tables, these are unique values and they can only be unique because you can only have one of that certain customer. But that certain customer can order multiple units throughout the year. We can see this because it says one to many depicted by the one and the asterisk there. If at any time you want to see which relationships exist between the tables, you can just hover over the bar and it will highlight it in green there. Now we're gonna come back to data view and over to the sales table and we're gonna create a few extra columns within this table. So the first one's going to be revenue. If you just double click in the title there, you're able to edit it. And double click type cost and then we're going to add one final one for profit 
So now we're going to start making our calculations. Click in the first cell there, press equals, and we're going to type in related, press tab and it will open a parentheses. Now we've created relationships between them, we can now reference between the tables and that's what the related function is able to do. So we're going to just go down to the products table and we're going to just hit tab on the revenue, close the parentheses and press enter. What we'll see is it will bring through the unit revenue for each one of these products. So for CC10, the unit revenue there is 250. Come across to the products table, see that CC10 there is indeed 250. But this is unit revenue. So we want to multiply this up by number of units and press enter. That then will give us the revenue for that total number of units sold. We're going to do the same with cost. So equals related products table and select cost and multiply that by number of units. Press enter. And then for profit, this is simply just the revenue that we've calculated in the sales table. Press the cost calculated in the sales table. And so now we're going to add in a pivot table. So come across insert, pivot. Now see that we've got the from data model. If you don't have that available for whatever reason, if you go back into Power Pivot, go to your Manage, and you can select Add Pivot Tables straight from here. So we could do that. We're going to put it onto a new worksheet. I'm just going to bring that across, make it a bit bigger. So now you can see that we've got all of our tables within the Pivot field list. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in customer name into the rows and that's from the customer table. And then we're going to bring in profit. So one of those calculated columns that we've just produced into our values. And we're also going to bring cupcake flavor up into the filters. I'll just close the pivot field list quickly. And let's just format these. What you can see is now we have the ability to choose each one of our uh, cupcakes in isolation. And if you remember, these are all from separate tables. So we've taken an element from each one of the tables and are able to create this pivot table now. We're now going to take a look at how we replicate the same results, but this time using Power Query. So we need to load all of our tables into the Power Query Editor model. So come across to the Sales table, come up to Data, and select From Table Range. What this is going to do is it's going to open a Power Query Editor. Across on the left, you see that this is the query, and our only query currently is the Sales Query. This data here is the data that currently exists within that table. And over here, you can see all the applied steps that we've currently done to this data. And there's only two at the moment. So it's the source of actually getting the data. And then Power Query automatically has added a second step where it's looked at the data and it's tried to apply a change type step whereby it puts the data into a data type that it believes is most accurate. On this occasion, what we're going to do is just change this one from a date time to a date only, and we're going to replace the current there. We're going to duplicate this table, this query. I'm going to name this products. We're going to remove that change type for a second and then over on the source, 
can just double click on there and change this the product that's now going to pull all through the products table within our workbook and you can see that it supplied the change type step there as well just going to highlight the revenue and the cost and we're going to go up to transform we're going to go up to the date type and we're actually going to change that from decimal number to currency and we're going to replace current there now we need to bring through our customer table it's home new source file excel workbook navigate to the customers and import that that brings through two options this is the sheet and then this is the table it's always best practice to try and pull through table information rather than information from the sheet itself click that press ok i'm just going to take the one out of there you can see that this has got all of the customer information it's applied three steps here so first one is the source that it's looking at the second one is navigation so within that file we've said look at customers and it's a table so it's picked up that information and then it's applied its change type step so on the sales table we're going to now effectively create the relationships using the user interface one of the easiest ways to do this is by using the merge queries function so if you click on merge queries first one we're going to do is bring through the customer information we're going to click on customer number and now we're going to pick the related table which is customers and we're going to click customer number there click OK click expand and all we need is the customer name from this table click that and then we're going to uncheck this box click OK that brings through all the customer names we're going to do the same thing now with the products table so merge queries product code products table and click on the product code there now this time we're going to want to bring through the other three columns so click OK come up to expand and then just uncheck the product code because we don't need that we've already got it OK now we have bought through all of those we click on those two columns that we used and remove them and you can see every time we do something it's just applying new steps now what we need to try and do is calculate the total revenue and the total cost click on revenue and number of units come across to add columns standard and then multiply that will bring through multiplication just up here you'll see that it's titled it multiplication we could add a new title for the column total revenue press enter we're going to do the same for costs if you highlight cost hold control highlight number of units come back to standard and multiply if you forget or you're not comfortable with changing the code in there once that comes up you can then just double click and you can type over that what that will do is it will add a new step so you can see up here we haven't added a step after inserted multiplication for renaming it because we've done that straight in the code itself in this example we've left it and then renamed it afterwards so we've taken it from multiplication to total cost it's personal preference i quite like to try and change the code at source rather than adding new steps so now we've got that we can remove the revenue and cost per unit columns and that leaves us with these two then if you highlight uh, total revenue and then total cost 
it's important to highlight them in that order because Power Query will um, do the calculation based on the order that you select the columns. Come up to standard and then subtract. And we'll just change this to profit. So now we've got all of the same columns that we had in the Power Pivot scenario. We're going to come down over to Home and close to Load, but we're going to close and load to and select Connection Only. If we selected Table in this instance, because we've loaded three tables into the Power Query Editor, it would then load three tables back into Excel. We don't want that. We're only going to want one table, which is a sales table. So it's better to create connection only to begin with. That creates connection for all of the tables. You can see that it's opened up a new pane here. Then we're going to come across to our where we had our power pivot pivot table. Right click on our sales query. We're going to select load to and then pivot table. Click OK. That brings up now our normal pivot table options. We're going to bring customer name into rows, profit into values, and then cupcake flavor up into filters. If we apply the same formatting, you can see that the two pivot tables are identical. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.